Welcome back to Passionate World Talk Radio Network. <clears throat> Excuse me. A wholly owned subsidiary of Global Media Network, LLC. Educate, enlighten, entertain. And on today's episode of Scam Damnation, we're going to talk about the two billion people who were affected when their social security was taken by hackers and landed up in the dark web. And recently I had two listeners to Scam Damnation send in emails to me talking about their experiences about A, being hacked and finding their information, personal information, and their social security number in the dark web, and both left me questions about how concerned they were. And if you continue to watch the program to its climatic ending, you will receive additional tips and information of what you need to do and who you need to contact in order to protect yourself from having your social security number stolen from you and ending up in the dark web. But I will tell you this at the beginning, the number one priority that you do is to freeze your financial accounts, whether they're credit cards, whether they're your bank accounts, whether they're your assets, anything that you believe would be a target for a hacker who's already taken your social security number to go in and help themselves to additional financial gain. So, and how do you go about doing this? Well, let me enlighten you with a combination of the two emails that I received from current listeners to our program, Scam Damnation. Once you have received word, whether it's from a credit card company or even a private company that you have paid monthly subscription to, to alert you when your social security is taken or credit card has a charge on it that you've never seen before. When you receive the message, make sure it's the real McCoy, number one, and not somebody's made up attempt to try and get even more information out of you. And the number one question from both of my listeners were, Is there a way to monitor the dark web? And the second part of that question is, why can't I just go into the dark web and delete the information that they have on me? And then speculation from both listeners who said, why do we allow this to happen? And don't these companies have a responsibility to the people who they're representing and hold their confidential and personal information. It makes one wonder how good their computer teams and IT teams really are. And are these people incompetent and handling our personal information? Do they take the necessary security information and protect it on their computer programs? And the favorite response from both these parties were, we just cannot accept these continued data breaches. So what are the four steps that these people did? Number one, freeze your three credit bureau accounts. Advise your bank about the fraud alert. 
contact your social security about the fraud alert and go to the police station to advise a fraud report. Of course, you also understand that after you alert your social security, you also need to make an appointment with your social security so that you can A, request a new social security number and B, get a new social security card. The same way you would do it with a credit card is call up your credit card institution, tell them that your social security number has been stolen and it's now on the dark web. Not only freeze the account, but they will probably close out the account with that particular number assigned to it, issue you a new credit card with a new credit card number. Very important. And as a side note, I was told four months ago that if anybody wants this information for approximately $50, they can buy this information on the dark web. Now, this just didn't happen to the Social Security Administration with their data being stolen. In 2021, UC Berkeley recently received alerts from Experian. Their social security numbers were found also on the dark web. And if you look up the dark web on Google, you won't find it or you'll find information on it, but you won't find a way to get into it. And they put out information, that is the University of California, about cyber attack impacting the UC and hundreds of other organizations. And then they go on to recommend that if you have not signed up for any free credit and or identity monitoring and may not be aware of the potential exposure of your personal information that you should sign up now, says Jen Stringer, Berkeley's Associate Vice Chancellor for IT and Chief Information Officer. And they leave a number for enrolling. Call 866-617-1923 and a reference engagement number, capital D, capital B, 26512. Stringer goes on to say that receiving a message from a credit monitoring service about your social security number being found on the dark web can be unsettling. Frustrating, upsetting, scary. She speaks from personal experience and she advises everyone to check their notifications and follow the instructions. For example, her company was and is Experian. An experienced customer care line is 877 890 9332. Anthony D. Joseph a Berkeley engineering professor and an expert in cybersecurity noted the importance of the Experian alerts. Their alerts provide you with important and specific information that you should then act upon to help protect your credit and your identity. The sooner you notify them and take action, the better. Both Stringer and Joseph strongly recommend that individuals who find their social security numbers found on the dark web should do the following. Number one, create a My Social Security account with the Social Security Administration. You do this to claim your social security number and ward off anyone else from creating an account in your name. Review your earnings on your social security statement to ensure your information is correct. If you have a freeze implemented on your credit, 
you need to lift it before creating a new My Social Security account. Google it, write in My, M-Y, capital S-O-C-I-A-L, one word, security account. Two, get your free credit reports from annualcreditreport.com. So that's A-N-N-U-A-L. C-R-E-D-I-T-R-E-P-O-R-T dot com. Check for any accounts or charges you don't recognize. Continue to check your reports annually in addition to any regular alerts you signed up for. Three, check your bank and credit card accounts daily. Make sure you recognize all the transactions listed. Pay particular attention to small transactions. Why small? Because these hackers believe that anything under $100, the individual who needs to make up that amount won't canter it because everybody has at least $100 in their account to pay up. Sign up for transaction monitoring. Alerts from your financial service institutions that can alert you to any suspicious activity in your bank, credit union, or credit card accounts. Very important. For me personally, I have that. I have Discover. I have American Express. I have Chase. And they all alert me if an unidentified charge shows up in my account and they don't recognize it or I do not recognize it. You receive an email and they ask you if this charge is legit. And if it isn't, they'll decline it and delete it. And if it is, you are to let them know. Create a fraud alert. Place a free fraud alert on your credit accounts by contacting any of the key credit agencies. What are they? Equifax, Experian, or TransUnion. Consider placing a free credit freeze via the three credit agencies. A credit freeze makes it harder for someone to open a new account in your name. If you place a freeze, be ready to take a few extra steps the next time. You apply for a new credit card or for any service that requires a credit check. And most importantly, report any Social security number theft. Be aware that tax identity theft happens when someone uses your social security number to get a tax refund or a job. Report the theft of the social security number to the IRS. Or you can call 1-800-908-4490. So that, folks, is what you need to do to protect yourself should you find your social security number on the dark web. Because if you don't do it, chances are somebody will steal your social security number and use it for nefarious purposes, meaning they are going to commit a crime by using your social security number to get a mortgage for a house or around the world trip or possibly even buy a lot of stuff that you probably do not need, but they certainly want to buy. Thank you very much for joining us this afternoon. This program is sponsored by two programs. One is Ruby AI And the second one is The Obstacles of Podcasting. The Obstacles of Podcasting, please go over to the website, https colon forward slash forward slash education.passionateworldtalkradio.com forward slash masterclass. Read all about it. High school, middle school students, college, university students, the ordinary person who always wanted to do a podcast or those who are podcasting and need a little bit of help to become the expert and the professional that they know inside that they are. The second corporation is Ruby, R-U-B-I dot A-I. Check it out on 
https colon forward slash forward slash esc73 dot try try ruby r-u-b-i dot a-i and it introduces you to the system and everybody remembers you can buy everything you want except that i say you can get everything you want with ruby dot a-i so give it a try and then contact me at 484-364-1032 and we'll get you up and running. Thank you very much. Have a fantastic Labor Day weekend.